Welcome to Adopt Tank Lesson. Thank you for deciding to watch this video. There's some farm, farm on your ank list that you need to know. And so I have like 10 questions, very good pharmacology that you have to know. You also have some content for you to practice, how to answer questions with the new generation questions in terms of select what apply. So we'll be talking about some of the strategy, how to answer questions um, with the SATA because it has changed. And so stick around, let's practice some questions on pharmacology and select that apply. 10 questions for you. These are good questions, uh, very good content that you need to know. So the way to answer questions in a SATA form, I want you to go read it from the back, okay? And start with what you're being asked, okay? And then from what you're being asked, you read the case, while you're reading the case, you underline um, what we call the buzzwords. And then when you find the buzzwords, rewrite the buzzwords in the case together in the simple form. So rewrite it. And then you use your content that you know after you summarize it to answer the question. Okay. You basically going to pick an answer choice that you are at least 100% or 99.9%. .9%. Don't choose anything you think you, you're you going to guess, like 50%. Anything more than less than 99.9, .9, yeah, don't choose it because then you lose a point. Now you can get credit. If there's three answer choices here and you get one of them, you're going to get one out of three. But if you choose four, you're going to lose all the points. You get zero for that question. And so you have to be... And it goes down to content, like focusing on the content and say, oh, this is what I know. This is what I remember for that problem. Therefore, I'm picking that alone. Okay. So what is the question? It's the SATA form. Select or apply. And really backward. Which of the following need immediate intervention? That means I need to intervene. The client was prescribed what? Samitriptan. Okay. Sumatriptan for intractable migraine. Which of this need immediate intervention? Your ask is your sata, and they need what? Immediate intervention. What is the case? Somebody with the migraine has been subscribed sumatriptan. What I need to do, rewrite is the same thing. I'm taking sumatriptan and then I need to intervene. There's contraindication or something somewhere that I need to intervene as soon as possible. And so that is what the question is asking you. Then you ask yourself, what do I know about this medication? That they think if somebody is taking migraine, it should be a problem. Sumatriptan is a vasoconstrictor. Therefore, any problem that involves vasoconstriction is bad. Hypertension, it's going to worsen your hypertension. If you have coronary artery disease, it's going to cause the coronary arteries to constrict and it will cause ischemia. Because of that, you should not take it in this patient. You should not take it in this patient. This is what I know based on my content. You see, I look at it. Now, I look at one, there's nothing about visual constriction. There's bronchospasm. It's different. There's different uh, mechanism involved. And therefore, I'm not picking it. There's nothing about visual constriction related to GERD. I'm not picking it. An issue of pneumonia is all relevant. So the two things you have to know, any patient taking some triptan is hypertension, uncontrolled, and coronary disease. That is all. So I select two, and there's there two answers there. I'll get it. If I select one, oh, I know one, I'll get one out of two. But if I select three, that means I'm going to get zero for that question. Not for the whole test, but for that question. So that's the first one. So we're going to use the same thing throughout. What is this? Which of the following the name should include? So this one is not a setup, but it's just one form. But it's the same strategy. It's a pharmacology. So it's pharma, pharmacology and SATA both intertwined. So which one you should include? 
does the act, okay? I need to include one of this. What is the problem case? I have a client who is doing what? He's taking uh, clopidogrel. You have to know what clopidogrel is, right? After an ischemic stroke, which of the following the next should include? You have to rewrite it. Rewrite the case. After you read it, you re-summarize it. I have stroke. Now I'm taking clopidogrel. Then you ask yourself, what is clopidogrel? It's antiplatelet. And what teaching do you provide with somebody taking antiplatelet? Bleeding. Bleeding precaution. That's so, that's my content. And I'll look at the answer choice. You see, I never go and answer the question right away. I break it down and I know what answer choice me I'm looking for. This is the test taking strategy. I have blood draw every three months. They're confusing you with probably coumadin or warfarin. By even warfarin, you do it weekly, not three months. So this is wrong. Avoid acetaminophen for pain. If you worry about bleeding, you should not take NSAID. Therefore, I'd rather take acetaminophen. This is a wrong decision. So half of the question, answer choice is right. Notify PCP if I have bleeding. You see, I'm looking for bleeding. I see bleeding there, unusual bleeding. Yeah, I'm going to call the doctor about it. So that's something. I will call the doctor about. Avoid driving for now onto a therapeutic level. You don't need therapeutic level for what? Clopridogrel with this plavix. They're confusing you with what? Warfarin. Okay, therefore this is wrong. The answer choice is number three. Okay, so that's how you answer test taking strategy. So this question is a single question, but it's loaded. It's a very, very important question. The same thing I'm going to do. Which of the following medication, this can be a case form you can get, responsible for such findings? So my being asked is med that will give me this finding. What kind of findings? A client was involved in motor vehicle collusion with a severe brain injury requiring intubation. So client was intubated. Seven days post-intubation, client had what? Acute onset of lactate rising. K is 5.7. There's peak T waves. Patient has fever. He has AST elevated, triglyceride elevated, CK 20,000, and creatinine 2.5. This can be a full case for you. And it's a content I want you to know on pharmacology. What is going on? So intubated, right? So let's let's see what we have. Somebody is intubated. All of a sudden, lactate going up, right? What what else do we have? We have K up. So hyperkalemia, right? Then I have EKG changes. I have what? Fever. I have liver failure. Okay. Liver AST of 500 is going up. Triglyceride up. Right? I have CK 20,000. 20, 20, so that is like rhabdo. Rhabdomyolysis. And a creatinine. Up, that's acute kidney failure. Which medication is responsible? If, if you don't know it, you can start to eliminate. I know fentanyl does not do that. Fentanyl is a pain medication. Okay. But all these things can be used to intubate the patient. You can start from Sasunoko A. If you recognize it, this is, you don't, they don't give it to you continuously. This one, they give it to you once. They intubate you. This is parallel. It will paralyze you, and then they will intubate you. That's all. But this happens seven days later, so it's not. What I know, they give it to you when you sedated and intubated is 
what? Midazolam, okay, which is versed, fentanyl, opiate. This is benzo and propofol. This is sedation medication. So propofol and benzos are used for sedation. Fentanyl is used for pain, right? And I know opiate, this is fentanyl, it's an opiate. I know side effect is like what? Uh, respiratory depression and then uh, constipation, hypertension. All those things are different. Therefore, I can eliminate this. What is going on? I know midazolam does not affect your triglyceride. Okay, I'm trying to break the question down. Therefore, I'll be left with propofol. And yes, propofol, it look like fatty. It look like TPN, basically, when they give it to you. It's like white, chalky thing they give it to you. It has a lot of fat. And there's increase in free fatty acid. But it block your body from taking any glucose or fatty acid inside. So it block your ATP. It affects the mechanism of electron transport chain. So there's acute accumulation of free fatty acid. This can lead to the muscle. You don't have any food. So muscle death. And everything starts from muscle death. The muscle is dying, so you have rhabdo. Your heart is a muscle, will go into cardiac arrhythmia, right? And when muscle is dying, they release potassium. That's why you get high potassium and you get a peak T waves, right? Um, and then this will go to your kidney and cause acute kidney injury. It also affects your liver because the liver cannot break down all these fatty acids and then it become a problem, it go overwhelmed. So acute, and what? why do we have uh, lactic acidosis? It's because of the anaerobic respiration. So you build up, you have lactate building up because now the, the tissue can, you know, the cells are dying and you get into this form. So acute rising of cat lactate, so lactate problem, um, hypo, uh, hyperkalemia, fever, triglyceride, and kidney problem. So you have kidney, your lung, your heart, and your muscle. That is propofol syndrome. That's what it is, acute propofol syndrome. And that is what the, the name they call it. So the answer choice is propofol. So the patient is taking propofol. And then, and that's why we don't give, we don't pull people on propofol more than 48 hours between 48 to 72 hours. When we get to that stage, we worry that we have to do something. And so we will stop those medication uh, from letting them do anything. So we change the propofol to another medication. So that's it. A client was prescribed Centroid. So this, you can change it in case they give you another name. Um, so this is the same as Levo thyroxine. Okay, so the same thing, select or apply. Which teaching, what teaching need immediate intervention? That means I need to intervene. I've done mistakes like that, but you got to write it down. I need to intervene. Some, that means I'm looking for wrong answer. Okay, that's the what I'm being asked. The case patient, is prescribed what? Levothyroxine or centroid for hypothyroid. Sometimes they give you the medication, what is used for, then you have to look for side effect. So I'm taking levothyroxine for what? Hypothyroidism, which teaching teaching need immediate intervention. You have to know how to teach the patient how to take this medication because it affects a lot of stuff. Usually take it in the morning. So you got to know this, take it in the morning. You should not take it with any medication. Take it on an empty stomach, yes. Don't take it with any medications. And you don't want to eat with that. So take it one hour before, before you eat, yeah. But if you can wait and you're hungry and you eat, you got to wait two hours after you have had your meal, okay? Take the medication with calcium antacid. Antacid is always bad on your exams. Don't pick any answer choice that say antacid. It's wrong. Can't so this is a wrong. So this is the one we're going to intervene. So this is our answer. Number five is one of our answers. 
take medication with metformin, no, it's going to affect metformin. Metformin usually does not cause increased uh, hypoglycemia. So it does not cause hypoglycemia. When you take it with levothyroxine or centroid, it will make metformin causes increase in hypoglycemic episode. Therefore, your doctor may have to decrease the dose of your metformin. So you should not take it with it. You have to wait a couple of hours later. So this is another answer. Take medication if no improvement of symptoms immediately. Yeah, continue to take it. If your symptoms does not improve, it can take like three weeks for you to see some improvement. So this is good. Take medication during pregnancy. Yeah, when you're in a pregnant mood where you're stressed, you may need even two times the dose. And so you should take it. So which medication, which information need immediate intervention? Normal five. So normal five need immediate intervention and normal four need immediate intervention. The rest of them all are correct teaching. So we're looking for need immediate intervention, normal five, normal six. You see, I uh, keep on going back. Mental process because you can make mistake easily. You're thinking you're looking for the right answer. No, five and six are what we're looking for. Okay, pharmacology and selected apply. If you're not sure, you see there's eight questions. This is what it can do to you. It give you eight questions. If you pick more, you get zero. This is what I'm trying to emphasize. It's a selected apply. If you're not sure, just leave it alone. This is a single question. Which is appropriate response from the nurse? So which one is an appropriate response? So my ask is an appropriate. You see, I'm underlining the buzzword, the keywords, appropriate response and reading from the back. So I'm looking at something that is appropriate that the nurse is supposed to say. What is the issue? A client is prescribed with nitroglyceride for angina, complain of what? Headache. So you break it down. I have angina. I'm giving nitro, now I have headache. You know nitro causes headache, right? How does the ni uh, nitro work? Nitro is a venal dilator. So you dilate your vein and pull blood in your leg. You pull blood in your leg, in, in, in the veins of your leg. So you see blood staying here. And you can have flushing of your leg or face, right? If you get up right away, you're going to feel dizzy. This is why you get autostatic. In your brain, it does the same thing. It dilates the veins, and you have more blood in your vein, in your uh, in your brain. Too much blood in your brain give you the headache. So. For this patient, what do you tell them? If they start having headache, that means the medication is working. So they should not stop taking it. We're looking for appropriate response. Report to the emergency room. It's a common side effect. They do not need to go to the emergency room. Take acetaminophen. Yes, we are treating the problem. Rise slowly when getting up. They are not dizzy. So that's a trap question. They are not dizzy from the nitro. Rising slowly will not solve the problem. Somebody say me that the problem is the blood in the brain. When you rise slowly, it's not changing that. So treat the headache. So this is wrong. If they say they're dizzy, yeah, rise slowly from sitting position when you get in up. This is a SATA. So we go back. 99.9% .9 sure, right? So let it apply from the back. Which of the following are common side effect of the medication? So I'm looking for side effect of the medication. The client prescribed was desmopressin for DI, diabetes insipidus. So you're breaking down. I'm taking desmopressin for what? DI. What are my side effects? That's what I broke the question. And I know that if I'm taking something for DI, I'm pretty sure it's ADH. So desmopressin is a form of ADH. What does ADH does? Hold on to water. 
If you hold on to water, you increase your blood volume, right? And what happens? You get headache, you get hypertension, right? Your, 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 your sodium will go down. You get hyponatremia, and you start having seizures, and then you have mental status change. Somebody have DI, you give them um, desmopressin, you make them basically SIDH in disguise. So that's why they have hyponatremia and seizure. That's the side effect they have. The there is a nasal form. You can take it nasally. You can take it IV or Cyb-Q or IM. Yeah, IM form, sorry, IM. IV, so IV form, nasal through your nose and IMM form. If they, use, if they have the nasal form, they usually get irritation of their nose and they get congestion. So water intoxication, yeah, we holding on to water. Hyponatremia, yes. Headache, seizures, mental status change, and nasal. So all of this is right. Okay, so you get seven points if you choose all of them. Right, if you only know five, you get five out of seven, it's fine. Choose those that you're confident, select or that apply. What teaching is affected by the nurse? So there's only one answer choice. A client with Alzheimer's disease was prescribed what? Memetin, right? It's prescribed some medication due to what? Westerning symptoms. What teaching is effective? So I look at it, I read from the back, I said, what teaching is effective? I'm looking for effective. Trust me, you got to write it down or something to, so that you can focus on it and circle it. Effective teaching. Okay, so I'm looking for effective teaching. Client prescribed what? I'm underlying my buzzwords, Alzheimer's disease and memetin. So if you're taking Alzheimer's disease and memetin, what are the teaching you provide for this patient? All you have to know is what is memetin. This is medication that is used to improve your cognitive function and your ADL um, as you worsen throughout your progression of your Alzheimer's disease. You progress from um, mild to moderate to severe disease. And therefore, it's going to improve your cognition and your way, your memory and all that stuff. The problem is this is a progressive disease. There's no way it's going to stop anything. So it's a gradual process. So look at the answer choices carefully. And this is demonstration of test taking skills. I will stop the progression of, there's no way, there's no medication that stop progression of anything. So it's not going to stop it. It will immediately improve. You see half of the question is right. I see cognitive, I'm not, I think it's, it's, it's distracting you, you pick it. But if you look before cognitive, there's improvement. Oh, okay, it's good. But what is the first word? Immediately. No medication work right away. It takes some effect. Okay, time. So this is wrong. Gradual improvement of your activity of daily living. When your cognitive function improves, your activity of daily living increases. Totally bad word. Reverse bad word that the cause of the disease it does not refer it's the plaques okay formed by the glutamate that's the underlying pathophysiology will continue that's why we use this memetin to block the glutamine formation so gradual improvement not immediate three more this is a SATA question, a good one. Select or apply, right? Which prescription the nurse should I need to question or clarify? So something is wrong, I need to question. I'm looking for wrong answer. A nurse is caring for five patients, okay? Caring for five clients. Which prescription the nurse should clarify, right? When you look at it. Number one, it's a multiple sector, right? And nalopril and spinolactone. 
for hypertension. Hmm? Enalapro is ACE inhibitor. What is the major one side effect? Increased potassium. Spinolactone is potassium sparing. Increased potassium. We have two hyperkalemia issue. We need to question this. A client prescribed 400 milligram of pantoprazole for good. We have a PPI prescribed for good. That is good, excellent. What is the issue? 400 milligram. The maximum you take a day is usually 80 milligram. You take 40 BID. So this I need to question. I need to question. Okay. Question this, I question this. A client prescribed propanolol. Okay, propanolol for hypertension and as asthma. Do you see anything there? This, this is the way I do when I see asthma and they ask me medication and they give me beta blockers, I write BAM. If I don't see BAM, which is misoprolol, atanolol, and metop metoprolol. If I don't see any of them, then that one is not selective. These are selective beta blockers. As my patient, you can only give them selective beta blocker because there is a beta receptors in the lung. That the asthma, if you give them beta blocker, it will constrict it and cause bronchospasm. So we give them bisuprolol, which is a selective beta blocker, atanolol, selective, and metoprolol, um, selective. I have a good uh, lecture on my YouTube channel. You should check it out. Propanolol is non-selective. This will cause exacerbation of asthma. You need to intervene. The client on somitriptan for migraine and as CAD, we already saw that, right? Basal constriction is going to worsen my CAD. The client on metagonovin for postpartum and rage and as what? Hypertension. What is the issue? Metagonovin, also used for most uh, postpartum, is very, very good. Emrage. Why? Did, how does he do that? Something is bleeding. How do you stop the bleeding? Vessel constriction. A vessel, you see, pathophysiology is used for bleeding. It will like vessel constrict the the, um, the vessels to stop bleeding. But if you have hypertension, you're going to have hypertensive emergency. And therefore, we need to intervene. So all of them, you have to clarify. Um, this is a good pharmacology going every field to show you how they can ask you a question. We need to intervene all of this. Something wrong with this medication. Critical thinking question. Okay. Two more. What is your priority intervention for this trip? I give you this. What would you do? What do you do? It's a strip. All you need to do, find if it's in sinus or not sinus. That's the key. Uh, you look for the RR interval, and you can see that these are no sinus. This is not the same as this, and it's not the same as this. Therefore, this is not a sinus. It can be AFib or block. There's a block. Either first degree, second degree, third degree. Then to distinguish between them, look for P wave. Blogs, they have P waves. Some P waves have a long uh, make the PR interval here from here longer. And some uh, P wave will be there and the QRS will be gone. Here, I don't even see P wave. I don't see P wave at all. So that tells me this has to be AFib. 
if this is a fib, atrial fibrillation, there's two things. There's anticoagulation and rate control. The most important is control the ventricular response. The ventricle, the atrium is like firing, like it can go to like 20 beats, you know, 200. Usually the atrium, when people have AFib, the atrium is going 200, sometimes 250. But we see a ventricular response. Whatever you see is usually ventricular response. You can see like 110. It's almost half of them. Uh, or lower than what the atrium is doing. People don't get that picture. The atrium is quivering, but the ventricle is getting some information. It can be like 110, 120, but the, the rate of the atrium is like human goes. That's why you can see it there. Therefore, in order to prevent stroke or any problem, is to control the ventricle so that the ventricle will lower the rate. The atrium can still fibrillate, but the ventricle is fine, its rate is okay. So anticoagulation is not your priority. You want to give them something that will slow down the heart rate. Nitroglyceride decreases your blood pressure and mirolone also decreases your blood pressure. These are venodilators, so you're left with this. This is how you answer pharmacology question. I know what these, each of them do, I eliminate them. I'm using the content to look at it and I can see that I'm left with that. This ties up. Okay. Pharmacology. And the last one. And then it's caring for a client diagnosed with what moderate what Alzheimer's disease. Which prescription the nurse should anticipate? Alzheimer's disease. So select or apply, right? Prescribe which prescription the nurse should anticipate. I have Alzheimer's and I'm prescribing medication. I have moderate disease. So which one? So that means what is the treatment? You're writing in that before you look at the answer for Alzheimer's. That's all. Medication use. If you don't know what medication you use, look at what I'm going to do. Do you recognize this? Trazodone. You should by now. It's a common medication we use in depression and for sleep, okay? It's a good for sleep, but also used for depression. We don't give it to patients for Alzheimer's, so as moderate. They may need sleeping medication, but usually if you treat the underlying problem, they'll be fine. Do you remember this? Alloperidol, this is antipsychotic. You have to recognize this medication. Antipsychotic is not used to treat with Alzheimer's, unless they have some hallucination, agitated, and all, even those you redirect them, you take care of them, or severe problem, delusional, sometimes they get better just by educating them. Do you recognize this or that? If you not, leave them, but you have to know this. Cabidopa, levodopa. This medication, you should, you should know by now. It's a common medication you have to know before you go and take a test. They lack action so many things about chew feed and all those things, what you do, side effect. You know, I don't want to talk about them here, right? So and we use it for what? Parkinson disease. So you're left with this. It's a selected apply. You have to pick one of them. Guess what? Both of them are right. But this is how you do select or apply. You see, you look for the, those nowadays, you look for the long, wrong one, answer choice, and whatever you left with, there may be one of them is right. If you think one, you can bet yourself on one, and you get one out of two. But if you're confident, you pick all of them. Okay? So, Mimatain uh, is used for Alzheimer's. It helps with the cognition function and the uh, ADLs. And, Donil Pizor is also used the same thing. So these are, they have a last name of Pizor, um, and, but these are the two medications we use for Alzheimer's. So this is the end of it. So let us apply two questions, um, but this is the technique and a bunch of pharmacology that you should be familiar with. I hope it did help you solidify some medications. I try to give some content as you go along. Farm in on the anklers is um, a given. And then if you need help, check adapt anklers, put your notification on, and then you will never regret. Take care of yourself and all the best of luck. Bye-bye.